I'm a couple minutes early, so if you're here watching, comment, let me know that you're here. Today we are going to make flooded decorative sugar cookies. And for any of you that follow my YouTube channel or just on here on Facebook and I post about videos that I have on YouTube, I do have a cookie dough recipe for these sugar cookies on my YouTube channel. It should be just under decorative cookie or decorative sugar cookie. I can't remember which one I've got it under. But, um, but it's for this specific recipe. So if you want the recipe to use, it should be on there with a video tutorial. But you can also message me if you have questions about it along the way. Or message me on YouTube, you can comment on there too. So yeah, comment, let me know you're here. Um, I'm going to do a few elephants, a few butterflies, and then I've just got like an oval shape just to show you like a basic sugar cookie. But to be honest with you, sometimes it's easier to do a shape because then you don't notice if it's not a perfect circle or not a perfect oval. It just kind of hides some of those issues if you're having those. So Landon, is there anybody on? Uh, yeah. Yeah, good. Okay. So if you've never done a sugar cookie, let me give you a few quick tips when you're baking these. If you make the recipe that I use, you have to chill the dough before you bake it. So you would just make the cookie dough Put it in plastic wrap in your fridge for at least three hours, if not longer, before you roll it out. And then you want to roll it out immediately from the refrigerator while it's still cold. Um, it's a soft dough, and you don't want it to get so soft that it is hard to work with. Your shapes will come out much cleaner if it's cold. And then you can bake them right away. Out and immediately put your tray in the oven. Or if you are really worried about the shape not holding up, like if it's a really intricate, specific shape, then you can pop your tray of cut-out cookie dough in back into your refrigerator for about 10 to 20 minutes before you bake it those are all little quick tips but and then they only take about 10 to 15 minutes to cool before you can start decorating them so that's a perfect thing um so anyway so i'm going to show you what i did earlier before we got on here this is a butterfly so this is not perfect because i tried to do it all in one step and normally you want to do this in two steps and i'll go over that a little bit more here in a minute so Throughout this, you can comment with questions. I've got my son Landon here, and he's going to tell me if he may pop some of the question. But I'm going to have to point this camera down away from my face so you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm going to push it, yeah, down like that. I think it's good. Because I want you, I'm going to go on the other side of this table, and I want you all to see my hands work so you're going to see what I'm talking about so you won't be able to see my face. And I'm really disappointed. So, okay, so on this butterfly that I did before we got on here, this, you have two different consistencies for your royal icing. You want a thicker one to do your outside with, your border, then you want a thinner one that you fill it in with, and then, I don't know if you can tell or not, but on the inside of the butterfly wings, I've done a, a yellow design, and that was, while well, it was still very wet, so both, so it just kind of sunk down into the pink. The blue you would normally want to do, like maybe a couple hours later or more, so it sits up a little bit more 3D, but I was in a hurry, so I didn't do that. How's the lighting? Hope everybody can see me. I know last week's video was a little bit blurry. Okay. So let's start with just this simple oval one here. And I'm going to do that in red. So I've got two different bags of icing. And these are tipless um, disposable piping bags. You can buy them off Amazon. They're on my Amazon storefront account. So you can try those out. I've got this one's a little bit thicker. So I'm going to use this for its border. And I just cut a hole in the end of this. And tied the top of it so it wouldn't come out the top. Now bear with me. It's a little bit weird of an angle for me, so I hope this turns out okay. So you're just going to start wherever is most comfortable for you on the oval. I'm going to start in the top center. And it just kind of follows your bag. And I'm using my left hand to steady my right hand. That's actually following the shape of the cookie. Back to here. All right. And actually, I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes while I outline some of these other cookies. Because if you can let this sit for a few minutes, you're flooded icing that you put in won't fall over the edge. So let's do another pink butterfly. This is my thicker consistency for the pink butterfly. And once you practice, you'll get a little faster. And you'll find how important it is to get the consistency right. So I would say on the thick consistency that I'm using now, it's thinner than buttercream, obviously. 
um, but it's it's not as thin as like honey or something. You're not going to want that thin. Okay. So as you can see here, I just follow the outside of the line with that. I'm going to do another one. Let's do a blue one. Hope you all can see what I'm doing. I know it's hard to see. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm gonna go back to the red oval and fill that in. That was had a couple of minutes while I was doing those. So I've got the thinner red. I'm actually going to make this hole a little bit bigger so it'll actually flood a little bit faster. Do we have any questions, Landon? No. Okay. All right. So I've actually cut the hole a little bit bigger in this one. And you're just going to follow the shape of your cookie, but I would not go all the way to the edge because it can overflow. And it's not going to be perfect. I'm just kind of filling in the space. Now, anything with like a dull tip. Some people you'll see use like they like a sharp tip, like a wire. I don't like that, so I use something kind of rounded off. This is a fondant tool, and I'm not really scraping the cookie necessarily. I'm just touching the top of the royal icing and just in little circles, kind of moving around. And I will bring it to touch my border, but just barely. It's not going to be. I'm not really pushing on. I'm just barely making it touch, and it will stick to it. And sorry if you all get a bunch of hair in the video because my hair is going to fall forward. I'm just going to keep doing that all the way around. And if you've decorated cookies before, this is not how you do it. No worries. Everybody does it a little bit differently. But this is just what's always worked for me. Just to barely bring it around. Now, if you were going to go back and write on this cookie, you need to let this cookie dry for several hours before you do that. But I also wanted to show you... Um, another option, it's called like a wet on wet design. So while this is still wet, I'm going to use a similar consistency of a different color. So I'm going to use yellow and I pipe little polka dots in. They're going to sink down in that red. Just going to do random polka dots. And they just kind of fall down in there. And create that and then also on the red one while it's still wet I'm gonna add some sprinkles to show you how you can decorate cookie with sprinkles so these are just random sprinkles I had and I'm just gonna put them on the base there all the way across the bottom and then once that dries and sets up overnight you could write Maybe in a darker color, like with the black or something, right across the top, like whatever you wanted to say. You know, welcome or congrats or a monogram or whatever. So, that one would have to be done until it has set up for much longer. So, I'm actually going to push that one out of the way. All right. I'm trying to see if I have any comments. Oh, hi, Marsha Meredith. I can't see. Oh, Kelly Browning. Thank you for watching. Kelly, I hope your girls are watching. And Casta, thank you. Okay, awesome. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and flood these other two on the blue. Or actually, let me do pink first. I think I did that one first. Let's do pink. Again, with a thinner consistency. I'm just going to fill that in. Now, if you were ever, if you really wanted these to dry faster, like the background, you could make this flooding icing, like the thinner consistency, a little thicker, and it would dry faster, but it can be a little bit more difficult to flood your cookie with a thicker consistency, so I would not suggest that if you are new to decorative cookies. And again, I'm not really touching that edge, I'm just making the icing touch the edge a little bit. Okay. All right, 
Now let's go back with the blue, again, the thin consistency to do a few designs. Ah, oh, they didn't work on the butterfly. I'll go back and fix that. See, it just kind of sinks down into the background icing. I shouldn't be talking while I do this. I'm not used to talking when I pipe. Okay, so there we go. And then I'll add a few polka dots in yellow. And then at this point, you would want this to dry again for several hours or overnight before you go back and add your centerpiece with the antennas. That way it'll set up 3D. Someone asked mm -hmm. what kind of icing is it? Okay, this is just your basic royal icing. I'm not using anything fancy. If you actually get online and look up Martha Stewart's royal icing recipe, that was the first recipe I ever used. I've adjusted it a little bit now because I do such a large, such a bigger quantity of royal icing now. I make big batches at one time. But if you look online at Martha Stewart's royal icing, that is what you should start with. Um, and play around with the consistency because you all you're going to do to make it thinner is add a little bit of water. All you're going to do to make it thicker is add a little bit of powdered sugar. So it's really easy to work with once you figure out what consistency is best for what design. The recipe is really easy. You need meringue powder, obviously. I grabbed the wrong bag. That was thick. See, I shouldn't talk when I do this. But yeah, it's meringue powder, which you can buy at Hobby Lobby and Michaels. And you might even be able to buy it at Walmart. Wilton makes a meringue powder brand. Or type and then a lots of powdered sugar and I just use a little bit of water but then you can flavor it so you could do vanilla extract but I will say if you do have any flavorings in it um, then you're going to if you can view it with vanilla I would use the clear vanilla because you don't want to color it because if you add like regular vanilla it's going to make it look kind of like an ivory color it won't be bright white and which makes it a little bit different when you go to color it okay and if you make your royal icing really, really thick, like if I have a lot of leftover royal icing after a cookie order or something, I'll make it really thick. I'll just keep adding tons of powdered sugar until it's the consistency of buttercream where it's really stiff. And I'll pipe little small flowers and let them dry on a cookie sheet for a couple of days. And you can actually pop those on anything else you want. Like they'll last for a really long time if they're in an airtight container after they dry. All right, so there's the blue. And I'm going to use red on this one. Okay, I'm going to leave that. All right. So push those out of the way. Let's do the elephant. Let's make him... Let's do a blue. Go back to blue. These are great, the elephant, or any of the animal shapes, like especially the jungle ones, are really cute to make into baby shower cookies. And don't make them gray, you know, like make them some pastel or whatever. Do another one of those. Okay. Let's do the last elephant. Let's go back to um, pink. We're talking about baby shower. This is such a weird angle to pipe cookies. So I apologize, you all. It's a weird angle. Okay. So again. Let me tell you, at Christmas when you're doing this many cookies, you will really start to rip your hair out. You do the same thing over and over again. But, not a whole lot you can do about it. Okay, so I'm going to fill these in. Did I grab the wrong one again? I did. My gosh. You should be able to tell which bag is thick and thin just by touching it. Like, because the thin bag, it almost feels like there's nothing in it. It's so thin. It's 
very lightweight. And the good thing about also about this uh, of royal icing, at least with the meringue powder recipe, is that you can just store it in your fridge. So once I get done today, I'll squeeze the bags clean, like back into a bowl with a lid or whatever, and put them in my refrigerator. And I can actually keep these for a couple of weeks if I keep them refrigerated and sealed. Now you would have to like kind of re-stir them a little bit and, you know, redo the consistencies probably when you went to use them again, but they do last a long time because there's no dairy in them. Okay. This one. And if you were going to be bagging these individually, which is a lot of times what I end up doing because they're party favors, you really want to make sure they are very, very dry before you bag them. So, like for instance, this weekend I had a cookie order and I finished decorating them last night about 9 p.m. and they sat on a cookie sheet to dry all night. And I didn't bag them up until about 10, 15 this morning, right before I delivered them. Because I just wanted to make sure that all my colors were completely dry. Okay, fill in this last one. And if you have a really good cookie dough recipe for sugar cookies and you don't feel like it works really well, like it spreads too much or whatever chilling it like I said before you bake it is one of the best ways to fix that of it spreading too much but also you can depending on your recipe you can omit if it calls for baking powder or baking soda you can take that out now your cookie won't be quite as tender but it will keep it from spreading so I no longer put that in my cookies anymore because I don't because I'm always doing like a specific shape and I don't want it to spread too much on the tray okay so now that they're all flooded, I'm going to go back on the blue and do some pink polka dots, just like we did before. We're not going to do a realistic elephant, obviously. This is very similar to what I would do for a baby shower. I do a lot of the um, like pink elephants with white polka dots, and then after they dry, I go back and add the outline for the ear, that kind of thing. I'm gonna do yellow on the pink. And as far as food coloring goes for this, like you really need dark food coloring when you're doing like buttercream, like trying to color it. I feel like this is similar. Some colors I feel like it takes really well, some colors I feel like it takes a while. So just kind of use a gel food coloring, not the liquid stuff you get at Kroger. Um, nothing against Kroger, but it is just not as strong. It's not meant for decorative use. Okay. So once these are done, so normally I would go back and like I said and draw the ear on, put a little tail on, draw that on, draw it on. But again, you want it to be more dry than that. So I'm going to go back to my butterflies and add that centerpiece, even though this is a little early to be doing that, just so I can show you all what that should look like, how you would do it. So to do that center point, you would start with bigger dots at the top and work your way down. So just hold it there and press and do that all the way down and just get a little smaller each time. So if you would, if I had waited, you know, it would continue to sit up 3D where this is going to kind of sink back down in there because I didn't wait. And then you would go back for your antennas and you would just pull up and then curl around. Like that. Where's my other butterfly? Here we go. Go back. Same thing with the red. Start with a bigger dot and get a little smaller as you go. And then go back with your antennas. So basically, anything that you want to sit up 
higher and not fall back down into your icing, you need to let that cookie dry really, really well before you add that component. These are probably some of the worst decorated cookies I've ever done, so bear with me. <laughs> I don't normally do them this, this quickly. Okay. And again, even though it's not going to work exactly the same, I want to show you all. If you were to draw his ear on, I'm going to use, let me see what color. I guess I'll use pink so you'll be able to see it a little bit. But you could draw his tail on. You would just draw a line and then almost like a broom, just fray it out a little bit there. I hope you all can see that. And then for his ear, you would just want to draw something like that. Like very basic. It's just simple. When I normally do these, I don't even add an eyeball. If I do, I go back the next day and use, you can get edible ink markers and I just draw a little black dot. Like I don't do a big eyeball because it's supposed to look more like baby showerish. Let's go back and do the same thing on this one. I'm going to use blue on this one so you can see it. So again, the tail braid and then the ear like that. Landon, do I have any questions or comments I need to know about? No? Do I have any questions or comments? Guess not. He doesn't want you all to hear his voice, apparently. There's no questions. There's a few comments saying, like, great tip. <laughs> my kids will be happy not to have a blobby Santa this year. <laughs> well, and if you do, I will say, Santa, obviously, I do a ton of those every year. When you're doing his beard, you want to make this as thick as possible. So keep dumping more, like, make the recipe, like, the actual recipe calls for the actual raw icing recipe but then go back and keep adding powdered sugar until when you pipe with it it doesn't move it stays just like it is and then you use a star tip which is a number 21 and you just do curls where it looks like his his uh, beard is really twirly curly whatever that means um all right i'm gonna actually move this back up so i can actually talk to you people okay there we go me? Yes. Okay. So anyway, Martha Stewart's Royal Icing Recipe. I have a sugar cookie recipe on my YouTube channel with a full tutorial and instructions, but feel free to use your own, obviously. Just play around with it. If you feel like it floats too much, take out the baking soda and or baking powder from your recipe. Play around with the consistencies and always reuse it as much as you can. So for instance, when I go to put these up at the end of the day, I'm going to take the thick and the thin of each color. I'm going to cut these bags open a little bigger Score them both into the same container because you can always add water the next time you use it, add powdered sugar the next time you use it to make it the consistency that you need it to be. The key is letting them dry between steps. So, like for instance, on this red plaque, there is no reason for me to even try to write on this right now. It would go everywhere, it would sink down in, which could cause the red to overflow. So, it's just not worth it. So, this is gonna have to sit here for several hours before I can write on it. Um, and when you're doing the writing, it needs to be decently thick. Um, icing because it needs to hold its shape because that'll make a huge difference. The sprinkles or any pearls, anything like that that you're going to add, you have to do while the icing's still wet. Now, if I was doing like I was adding a flower that I had already piped, and I'll actually show you all some I have. So these are, I know it's hard for you to see, these are like little royal icing rosettes that I made out of burgundy because I had some left over. And they've just been sitting on this tray in case I get an order that I can use them on. So if I was going to add this, I would have to add it while, let me find one. This is going to look ridiculous, but we're going to do it anyway. While this is still wet, and it'll dry directly on here. Now, if this had already dried, then of course you would just squirt a very tiny bit of a thicker royal icing on the back and then stick it on. But again, you want it to dry for a few hours. And if you write on these with edible ink marker, be very gentle, even if it's already dried, and it has to be already dried or your, the tip of your marker will go right through. You can't bear down like a pencil or a pen. You have to think almost like you're painting, like very light because it'll put a giant hole in your cookie. So yeah, those, they definitely have to go overnight. And the edible ink markers, they don't have to dry like this does, but you want to let them dry for half an hour. Like after you wrote on there, let it sit for another half hour before you bag them up or put them on a tray to take them out and hand them out. Um, but these go great in little cello bags. I have like a course a heat sealer that I heat seal them with, but if you're doing this at home, you could just tie them off with a ribbon or fold over the back with a sticker as a favor. Um, 
I do these for weddings and baby showers and birthdays all the time as favors. So feed me any more questions. Anything else? I'm trying to think of anything else I can think of that would help you. As far as the baking goes, I bake mine at 325 in a convection oven. Um, and they take about, it depends on the size of the cookie and the thickness that you're rolling it out. Mine are a little bit thick, so they can take up to about 10 to 12 minutes. If they're thin cookies, if you don't like a thick cookie, then obviously it's going to be a little bit less. But that's 325 in a convection oven. Um, I used to roll mine out really thin. But then I realized they were they were breaking, especially if they were a weird shape. So this one I haven't decorated yet. You can kind of see they're not super thick, but they're they're pretty good size. Um, but what I like about a thicker cookie is I bake it until it's just barely. I see a little bit of gold starting to form on the bottom or on the very edges of the smallest part of the cookie, and I know it's done. But then I let it sit on the hot tray, like on the cookie sheet, for another 15 minutes or so before I take it off to cool, so that it'll continue to cook the middle because where these have to sit out and dry overnight with the icing you don't want them to be dry cookies and if they're overbaked and then sit out overnight until the decorations dry they're definitely going to be too hard too crunchy of a cookie um what else what else oh you can also before they're decorated so like this you could freeze this if you made too many you could freeze it um, you could also, like I have some extra cookie dough that I made yesterday for the order I had this weekend. I made too much cookie dough, so I haven't rolled it out yet. It's still in the plastic wrap in my refrigerator. I can actually pop that in the freezer. You don't want to leave it in there forever, but you can leave it in there for a couple weeks as long as it's wrapped really good in plastic wrap and then put it in a freezer safe bag and then let it thaw in the refrigerator overnight. And the next day you could go back to rolling it out with a little bit of flour and it would work just like normal as long as it's fresh when you freeze it. Same thing with these. As soon as they cool... If you don't want to decorate them that day and you want to get ahead though with the baking, you could freeze these, but they had to be frozen very flat so they don't lose shape or break um, in a Ziploc bag or some kind of freezer, or, I mean airtight freezer container and take them out a couple days later. Let them sit for maybe 10 minutes to thaw a little bit, but they can still be cold. Just know that if they're cold when you decorate them, that icing is going to set up that much faster. So be a little bit careful. They want to work a little bit quicker. Um, what else? Do you have any more questions? I feel like I I've covered anything. all the basics. Um, there are a lot of different recipes for royal icing. I've seen some videos where they make they use like egg whites. I just want to go with whatever's easiest, and that's why I use the meringue powder. Um, and I think that's it. I think that's it. So. Um, I'm going to try to do another video next week um, while we're still in quarantine. I will warn you all though, once the quarantine starts to release, I will not be able to do as many of these because my cake orders are going to skyrocket on Saturdays especially. So um, I want to do these as much as I can and so I should be able to do one next week. But I was, as you see, businesses start to open back up and people start to have events again. I'll become that much busier. So, but I will continue to do these when I can, and I will continue to do the YouTube tutorials. I know they're not live, and you can't ask a question. Um, I've also been doing the Zoom baking classes, and I've actually done one of the decorating classes via Zoom as well. Uh, again, I will continue to do those as I can, um, as I have time for, as I really enjoy doing those. But I really want to get back to the in-person decorating classes, because they're so much more helpful to you. Um, let's see, what else? Oh. You, so check out all the YouTube, YouTube tutorial videos. If you want to sign up for my newsletter, I have a, a weekly newsletter that is not a decorating newsletter. It's actually like family style recipes, like an actual cooking, like here's a recipe for whatever, pot roast. And I video myself making it, I do a tutorial, and then I put it on YouTube, but it's only a link that you can see if you get the newsletter. Um, so if you want to sign up for that, message me or comment on here. All I need is your email address, it's totally free. So check all of those things out. Um, I'm even in the process of getting a Patreon account started so that for people that like this live interaction, but I won't be able to do it on a weekly basis on Facebook once we get, into the, once we get out of quarantine. So if you still want to be a part of live videos, I do plan on doing some live videos through my Patreon account. So only for people that are part of that group would see those live videos and participate in those live videos. So that's something you really want to do. Check that out. And I think we've covered it all. Yes, I think so. So 
Facebook, email me, comment on here, whatever. Even if you're watching this back in the replay, I will check comments throughout the day and respond back to you if you have any questions. Do we have any last questions or comments? I can't Someone see. Just said, sign me up, please. Awesome. Yes. Uh, send me your email address through Messenger on here, and I will sign you up, and you'll get uh, an entry email, like a welcome to my newsletter email kind of thing, and then you'll get one next Friday and, and throughout. So, yay. That was awesome. But thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I'm not sure how well you could see, but I hope that I gave you a few tips and tricks, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.